Do you see now what a symphonic theme is? How many seeds have already been planted for future growth? And this growth begins immediately with a repetition of the theme, but already with new wrinkles. The violins still carry the melody, but now are broken into octave leaps. Against it, the violas and the woodwinds are toying with new figurations, like embroidery. While the bass line is playing the theme again on the offbeats, as the woodwinds had done earlier. This together makes a restatement of the theme which is in itself a development of it. Now Brahms takes the second germ motive, you remember? And begins to feel out the possibilities that lie in it. And here we begin to sense another kind of developmental technique, that of searching out new keys or tonalities in which the theme can be seen from new angles. Now a new development of that same figure, this time through a rhythmic change. What was this? Has suffered a rhythmic displacement of accent so that the phrase begins on the offbeat like a syncopation. You see how this heightens the intensity of the melody. By this simple rhythmic device, Brahms has breathed a new passion into an already passionate melody. And finally, this restatement of the theme develops that motive of diminution we spoke of before, answering it in the bass, and then by a double diminution, in other words, by making it go four times as fast as at first. Now here is the complete restatement of the theme with all those developments we have noted. Now think of it, we have so far had only 44 bars of music, fairly quick bars at that, of only two beats apiece. And in that short space, we have already witnessed development of the first theme through rhythm, key change, diminution, double diminution, embroidery, imitation, syncopation, a staggering array, showing enough inventiveness for a whole symphony. And it is all still concerned with one theme, the first theme. We are now only at the transition section, which will carry us forward to a new key in which the second theme will be stated. Now this transition section contains new germinal motives significant enough to be called themes in themselves, but more important, no sooner do they appear than they are already undergoing some kind of development, just as the first theme did. You see, that's what a symphonic mind like Brahms is like. It immediately spots the possibilities in any given group of notes and exploits them to the hilt just as a great novelist develops the possibilities of his characters through every word they utter. Now the first motive of the transition section is based on a descending scale, which is going to be very important in themes to come, as you will see. But as it appears here, it is already developed through the device of a canon. That is, it is immediately imitated by another orchestral voice.
Now the second motive of the transition section, a kind of tragic fanfare. <laughs> which is also going to figure prominently throughout the development of the movement. In this fanfare, you may have noticed a new rhythm, strongly pronounced and almost balletic. Almost like a tango, isn't it? Well, Brahms now takes this rhythmic germ and makes out of it the accompaniment of the next transitional theme. Over this strong rhythm, the cellos and horns sing out a big romantic tune. So that all together, it really does sound like some sort of a huge mad German tango. which brings back the fanfare again, now developed through a change of key. Now taking those last two notes, Brahms builds a whole new section out of them using the pizzicato strings and the woodwinds as antiphonal choirs. That's real musical architecture, taking the last fragment of one section and creating the succeeding one out of it. But what is so special and so typical of this great symphonic mind is that this new section is at the same time a development of the very first theme, which if you remember also went in groups of two notes. so that when this section occurs, born of a whole other germ, it automatically, perhaps unconsciously, develops the first theme as well. You see how deep the wells of genius are. Everything connects and is unified at the deepest level. It is all one, just as the novel War and Peace, with all its mass of material and events and characters, is all one. Now the transition section concludes with two restatements of that descending scale we heard before. First we hear it syncopated in the winds with the pizzicato strings underneath. And then immediately in a dotted rhythm by the strings which burst out of their pizzicato chains, released and free. Now this last version of the descending scale is again in anticipation of themes to come. It is a shadow cast before the coming event because in the second theme, which is now about to be heard, this same scale in the dotted rhythm will be used as an integral part of the theme itself so that amazingly enough, we can say that the second theme has actually been developed even before it has been stated. These are the intricacies of the symphonic concept wheels within wheels, all part of one great machine. <laughs> 